Hello, beautiful stars. Courtney here with Stars of the Morning Light. And we have Dr. Benjamin Goins uh, talking to us about his new uh, new newsletter, <laughs> his um, April newsletter, or March, I should say. My goodness. I don't know what month I'm in, Ben. Probably because I'm <laughs> focused so much at, of April 27th and 28th. This is How March. I'm... This is the month where people march into battle. The, oh, is that? Yes. Yeah. Brad mentioned something about the Winter eyes has of March. Thawed and everybody is restless and ready to go with energy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Or at least I am this year. Not everyone is this year. But I I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ready. are. And my husband probably is. The men are. That's good because you're the first ones to go through. So that's fine. <laughs> So Ben, let's just jump into it. What's what's going on with your newsletter this month? Um, this this one is a really big deal. Okay. Okay. This is like possibly the best newsletter I've written in the past five years because it really weaves together themes that I've been meditating on for a long time and struggling with on how to explain to people. And one of that big theme is is when people I keep meeting people whose calcium levels are messed up. And I'm trying to explain to them why they need iodine to fix it. Okay. And I was just not able to get the point across to people to understand. Okay. Okay. okay because... So where do you want to start with this, Ben? To like, I don't know, really but break like, it I, down. I, I guess just people I meet. So like I would meet people. They're like, okay, I've got calcium problems. I'm taking a calcium supplement. I'm taking a magnesium supplement. It's not working. And uh, they're like, oh, my calcium levels are messed up. So I'm taking vitamin D. It's still not working. And I'm like, you need to take iodine. But I wasn't able to effectively communicate to those people why iodine was the solution to their calcium problems because they get so distracted on these other things that don't work. Taking okay. more calcium didn't work. Taking some magnesium would help, but didn't work. Taking their vitamin D worked to an extent, but didn't work. So this newsletter is so important because it really <laughs> explains to people why when your calcium is screwed up, you need iodine to fix it. And it yeah. puts it together in a way that people can understand. So I'm going to try to get you to understand that. And if you can yeah. understand it, people can too. Have you yeah, ever met people definitely. like that? Have you met well, people? Well, I'm thinking about um I'm thinking about women more okay. more so because it's known, I mean, it's it's all of us women know that over time calcium is more of an issue for us like osteoporosis exactly and, and yeah and this newsletter is calcium thyroid and osteoporosis so I, I targeted the name of this to people the people are gonna with the problem of osteoporosis probably don't understand how that osteoporosis is related to their thyroid and their iodine because that's not something even i could explain but yeah. this newsletter explains it and I'm going to explain it and it's going to make sense to everybody. And it's really, really empowering. It's going to help so many people to get this information out there. So that's what I'm saying. It this will. is an extremely okay. Good. important and newsletter. The, uh, beautiful stars, lovely people out there. The link to his newsletter, which it is extensive and it, and it is enriched with, with information, it is in the description. So if you just click on the title here where it says more dot, 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 it'll open up the description underneath this video and his newsletter, the link to it is there. So please also listen today and, um, but read the newsletter as well. Cause Ben, I'm thinking, you know, it is actually my mother's birthday. Okay. And um, she grew up having to drink like powdered milk. Right. So, and she's a little bitty. She ain't like me. She's like five, two or something. So we already know that she's starting to have calcium and bone issues. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, talk to me about it. Tell me about it so everybody can understand um, because I'm, I'm, she's what's in my mind right now. Well, yeah, well, I, I want you to really absorb this information because you can help your mom. A lot of people can help their moms and people will help themselves. But the people with, with calcium problems and the people with thyroid problems, which is about one third of Americans you can help when they get this information, when they understand how it's connected. So I approached this for years now from the milk angle. Okay. okay. Meditating on milk is very powerful. It's got all the nutrients in it. But you'll notice in milk, there's calcium, there is vitamin D, and there's iodine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
And I've always been focusing on iodine for many years. I'm an iodine expert. And so I was struggling to relate the calcium and the vitamin D. How does that relate with the iodine? Okay. Okay. Struggling to do that. Now, the vitamin D is used to help your body absorb calcium. So the vitamin D and the calcium are very related. Okay. So I didn't focus on vitamin D so much in this, but just be aware that the vitamin D is involved in the calcium pathway. I'm talking about calcium in this newsletter and the relation to calcium and iodine. Okay. So you can approach that from a milk meditation. That is actually how I came at all this stuff a long time ago. Gotcha. Okay. But that wasn't enough to explain it to people. Because <laughs> 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 people just didn't get it. I'm like, yes, you have osteoporosis, you have bone problems, you have calcium problems, and you need to take iodine to fix this. And there's just a gap there. <laughs> Well, it's interesting too, because then okay. we go into the thyroid and honestly, it was the thyroid conversation that we had, you and I did mm -hmm. many moons ago that really opened my, opened me up to, um, the iodine because so many women, we also, I mean, our thyroids have issues, especially after birth, um, because everything's recalculating whatever the body's doing so many women end up with massive depression or some kind of stuff happening that can last for quite a long time, years, because their thyroid never regulated itself after giving birth. I yeah, have a, and, uh, and I can, I can explain friends. that. And I want everyone to have clarity on that. What happened is you got iodine deficient. Right. You gave all the iodine to your baby for most of it when they were born and the rest when you breastfed and then you didn't get more. Right. And so the important missing piece of this puzzle that hopefully I can explain in this episode is, is what is your thyroid really doing? Okay. It regulates all the energy in your entire body. Okay. Yes. And then how does it do that? This is where people, it does it with two different pathways. Okay. This is the new information I want people to know. It's in my newsletter. You can read about it. how is it regulating all the energy in the body? It's doing it two different ways. Okay. One way is using iodine. The other way is using calcium. Oh, that I'll is say that new. again. This is new information. Yeah, no, this is this. I mean, I've I've known this for a long time, but I haven't been able to explain this to people because I was still trying to put it together in a way that right. was clear to me. But I'm trying to make this clear to other people how this okay, works. Okay, cool. Keep going, Ben. We're tracking with you. Okay. We are. So your, your, your thyroid controls all the energy in your entire body. The way it's doing it is with two different pathways. One of these pathways is using iodine. The other pathway is using calcium. Okay. Okay. And everybody focuses on the iodine pathway. The iodine pathway is using the thyroid hormones. The thyroid hormones contain iodine in them. T3 and T4 has three or four molecules of iodine in them, okay? I'll right. go in more to that. There's confusion in that pathway, how it's used. But most people just completely ignore the calcium pathway because it's so damn complicated. It's really hard to talk about. Yeah, and Ben, okay. I want to uh, interject <laughs> just for a moment because we actually recorded a very good video about the thyroid. Okay. And that I will also add to the description. Um, so a link to the newsletter and there's a link to a, uh, chat Ben and I had a long while ago, probably a year ago. That was the thyroid. It blew my mind. So we can also talk a little bit about that, but if you want to focus on the calcium part, go for it, Ben. So we are. So this newsletter is focusing on the calcium part, but once you understand it, you'll understand the iodine part too. Okay. So it's, I'm trying to bring it all together to make it make sense to everybody. Right. Okay. So, and so there's two other hormones that the thyroid uses, which is uh, the parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. Okay. And so in my newsletter, I show where your thyroid is. It's like this butterfly shaped anatomy in your neck area. And what it, what it's doing that butterfly shape is that there's an artery on either side of it, carotid artery. And it also has an ability to monitor the blood. Huh. And the little bumps on it, which are the parathyroid parts of it, what they're doing is they're calcium sensors. Oh. It's, it's, it's your thyroid is literally monitoring the calcium levels in your blood. No way. Yeah, it is. But why is it doing that? And so it turns out that calcium 
And that second pathway, both pathways are related to energy. The iodine pathway is related to energy, but this calcium pathway is also related to energy. And when your calcium levels are low in your blood, that's telling your thyroid that you have overall low energy going on in your body. Okay. Okay. So that is the calcium is a signal to your thyroid about your energy level. Oh, I think I know where you're going, Ben. Keep going. Okay. And so, <clears throat> so this other, this other uh, hormone that the, the, the thyroid makes is called the parathyroid hormone. Okay. okay. And it is the one that communicates uh, the, the, th the thyroid senses the calcium level and that's how it communicates with the bones to modulate the calcium signals. Okay. So wow. and it's related to energy. The calcium pathway appears to be older and I can, the way that it's related, the energy molecule of the body is called ATP. Have you heard of that? Adenosine yes. triphosphate. Yeah. I've heard it from you. <laughs> okay. You've heard it from me. <laughs> <laughs> So both the iodine pathway makes more ATP because it promotes mitochondria, which make more ATP using more mitochondria and more mitochondrial function. So the iodine pathway also makes more ATP ultimately, but the calcium pathway also can help the body make more ATP. Part of that ATP, it's adenosine triphosphate. It's got three phosphates on the ATP. Right. Our bones are primarily made of calcium plus phosphate, calcium phosphate. Okay. Yeah. That okay. I think we've all heard before. So you've heard your bones are calcium phosphate. So, yes. so if your bones dissolve, like osteoporosis, your body's trying to dissolve your bones. Yeah. It's trying to get more phosphate. Okay. Because it needs those phosphates. It needs three phosphates per ATP molecule if it needs to make more ATP. Okay. That's new. I so didn't know that. So okay. that's, that is how the calcium is related to the energy. So that the thyroid is controlling the calcium because the calcium is it's calcium phosphate in your bones. So calcium is really kind of an indirect sensor. It's not really the calcium that's the energy, it's the phosphates. And also a really important point, which I make my newsletter and I'm gonna say it a couple of times, so you know, every single molecule of ATP also requires one atom of magnesium to stabilize it. Right. Okay. So so if you make more energy with ATP, you also need more magnesium to stabilize it. That's so why. Me, go go, I'm sorry, Ben. Can I, I just so myself and everybody else might be catching up. Okay. What I'm hearing mm -hmm. is osteoporosis and whatnot is happening because our body starts to um, take from the bones what is needed for the ATP. Your, the body has low energy. Right. Okay. And there's two pathways, iodine and calcium pathway. Mm -hmm. If your body cannot use the iodine pathway for whatever reason, which is usually that you don't have enough iodine, right. you don't have enough energized iodine or fluorized blocking or something, your body will try to compensate by getting more energy from the calcium pathway. Wow. And then over okay. time and over so, time. So what will happen is your um, thyroid will make more of that parathyroid hormone which tells more of your bones to dissolve, to release more phosphate. And also there's not just calcium in the bones, there's also magnesium in the bones. So what, what it's really trying to get is more phosphate and more magnesium, both of which are needed to make more ATP. So your body um, is getting a signal, I'm low energy, how can I compensate? And that's why ultimately wow. people are getting osteoporosis from low energy. Well then Ben, iodine again is then the solution because of what it helps the thyroid do with the atp right yes because if your calcium pathway is messed up making energy if you give it more iodine then your thyroid can compensate by using the iodine pathway to make more energy exactly and so then so so that so i think you got it so that is why iodine can potentially solve if not all of at least some osteoporosis if your osteoporosis is being caused from low energy your, your thyroid is detecting a low calcium, saying low energy. It, it makes high hyperparathyroid hormone, telling your bones to over-dissolve because it's trying to release more phosphate magnesium and make more energy. You just give it more iodine, then it gets it starts getting, your body gets enough energy, it will detect that, and then it will reduce that oh, too much parathyroid hormone to stop dissolving your bones so much. So that is the theory. I think you understood it as to why iodine can cure osteoporosis in that case. Yes. I, and what I'm thinking, Ben, is <laughs> the energetic level as well, because, 
you know, our generations are shifting so much. I mean, the boomers now, I mean, they, it keeps saying like, you know, your forties is like your thirties and your fifties are like your forties and your sixties are like your fifties. And it's like, okay. So people just keep going and going and going that I'm wondering how the body sustains what society is thinking and doing. I mean, now the retirement age is how old now? 67, you know, that it's like, well, if my bones are starting to disintegrate so I can have the energy to do the work that they're telling me I have to do to the age of probably 70 by the time I get there, how do I help myself then? That is actually where my brain went. Well, and, you you want to help yourself by giving your body the things it needs to make energy. Right. Okay. So on the iodine side, it needs the iodine. And on the calcium side, it's not actually trying to get calcium. It's trying to make more ATP, which it needs magnesium and phosphate. And there's magnesium and phosphate stored in your bones. So it's right. using the calcium as an indirect sensor so of it's energy. sucking those bones dry. So I talk about it in there, but the parathyroid hormone produced by the thyroid interacts with your whole body. It interacts with your gut to absorb more calcium and magnesium. It interacts with your bones to make your bones dissolve more. And it interacts um, with another part of your, oh, your kidneys. Very important. It interacts oh, with your kidneys. Okay. And so that was actually the first part I ran into parathyroid hormone. Cause I don't know if you, a long time ago, I wrote a, an article about calcium and fluoride in the kidneys. And I went through all the kidney hormones and I noticed yes. that one of the hormones, there was parathyroid hormone from the thyroid was talking to the kidney and it tells the kidney to absorb more calcium and more magnesium. Okay. So this, this connection of the thyroid using that parathyroid hormone is so important because that parathyroid hormone can, communicates with all the rest of your body besides your brain up here. Okay. <laughs> and it's your so thyroid wild. also connects with your brain. I explained that too. There's other hormones where the thyroid talks to the brain but there's a whole nother pathway where your thyroid talks to the rest of your body. And the main way it's doing that is by modulating calcium levels with the parathyroid hormone to try to increase calcium and calcitonin to reduce the calcium. It's got it up. It's got controls up and down. There's two different ones. Ben, let's say a, an, an older person comes to you with, mm -hmm. you know, finding the stuff out. My, you know, my calcium's down to this, what have you. Is there like an age cap of like, hey, you're too old, I can't help you? Or can anyone at any time your your iodine of iodine gold and silver detox system system of helping the body, restoring the energy, it can help any age? Yeah, it can help any age. There's no age limit. Okay. Um, so I think you've understood kind of what I've talked about so far. So the main Okay, so now I want to shift gears a little bit. The main problem that these, it's not just the older people, the younger people are experiencing it. They just know, you just notice it more when you get older because you get more toxins built up in your body. And mm. the number one, I talk about uh, how heavy metals interfere with calcium. Yes. Okay, so all these heavy metals that can form plus two ions. Right. And I mentioned strontium, barium, cadmium, lead, and mercury. There's other ones, but those are the ones I've written newsletters about and linked to them in my article. So calcium is it when the bones dissolve, it's a calcium ion. Ca two plus is the one that the body is using. So any heavy metal that can form a plus two a divalent ion can interfere with calcium. Okay, so one of the reasons people calcium is screwed up is because they could have heavy metals. Okay, okay. Iodine is still the solution because iodine detoxes heavy metals. Right. But the main thing that I really want people to understand is the biggest toxin that is, I'm really at <laughs> you. I, this is really interesting because you didn't like that. I called myself the health warrior. You're like, Oh, you should be the health architect or the health protector or something. <laughs> but I, I really did take you seriously. And I meditated on that a long time. And I really am the health warrior because I am at war with something. And I had to figure out what it was. I'm actually at war with fluoride. I think so, Ben. I, 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 am, I really do. I am. Yeah. I am really and truly at war with fluoride. Yeah. And the people who poison with fluoride. But the one thing I really want people to understand in this article I explain is how fluoride screws up your entire energy system. Mm. Both sides of the thyroid, the iodine side and the calcium side. It is just the worst. And, and I want people to understand that, that the reason fluoride is so bad is because it screws up both sides of your energy pathways. 
On the iodine side, the fluoride will imitate iodine and make incorrect thyroid hormones that your body can have autoimmune responses to, the grave disease, the Hashimoto's, all that stuff. But on the calcium side, fluoride can bind insolubly to calcium and get stuck with their calcium. Mm. That screws up the whole parathyroid hormone, the thyroid's ability to regulate calcium. So it, it and so for a lot of people, especially the older people, if they came to me like, what, what's my problem? Why is my calcium screwed up? I would tell them it's probably because you've got a bunch of fluoride in your bones. Oh. Okay? So, so what it is, is your body feels like it's low energy, which of course it's low energy because the fluoride is competing with the iodine. So the, the body's not getting enough energy from the iodine side. So it's trying to compensate using the calcium side of the, of the thyroid function. Okay. Right. The way it tries to do that is it sends the signals for the bones to dissolve, to release more phosphate and magnesium to make more energy, but the bones can't dissolve because there's fluoride stuck with the calcium there. So the body is, then gets really messed up because it's sending a signal to the bones to dissolve to make more energy, but the bones can't dissolve because there's fluoride there. Oh my goodness. So what would be somewhat the natural process to human bodies anyways, as we age and whatnot, can't happen because of the fluoride. Yeah. So then our bodies are, oh my you're God, totally, our bodies are very angry. Your energy system is completely blocked. Your entire energy system is blocked because your entire energy system uses those two pathways in the thyroid. Both sides of that energy system are blocked by fluoride. I was really listening there, Ben, because I forgot that fluoride attaches to the bone. And then when you said that, my brain went, like, I completely had forgotten that it does that. And I do think you are a fluoride warrior. If you want to attach <laughs> warrior to any other name or any other topic, it, it would be that. You are definitely a fluoride warrior. I totally forgot that. So it's blocking everything. Both sides. It's blocking wow. all of your energy. All of your energy is blocked by fluoride. Oh my God, dude. And that's why people are like fluoride zombies. They're easy to control. They don't have intuition. They don't have, their brain doesn't have enough energy. Their body doesn't have enough energy. Their whole body is low energy. Right. And then, and then of course your, your, your iodine level is going to be low. Your thyroid is going to be, your thyroid is all messed up. All the right. thyroid problems are from low energy. Your calcium levels are all messed up. So your phosphate and your magnesium. So all these different, um, Things are messed up, but the commonality, it comes back down to energy. It's messed up because your energy pathway is messed up. And the solution is to get the fluoride out. The reason the IMEDU system is so powerful is that the iodine and also the gold detox the fluoride and then the silver protects your body from the fluoride coming out. And you have to, and then it unblocks both sides of your energy pathway. And that's why people feel more energy, even within the first week. Right. And you end up getting uh, more of the and, iodine that you need in your, in your, um, keep pointing to my neck, the, yeah. your thyroid. <laughs> it's so wild, Ben, to think that, I mean, we are wonderfully made. I mean, you're the doctor here, but you know, we are, the, the body is so fascinating. And to think that something, you know, just so big in our throats controls so much and is so needed for this system to work and i find the location interesting your throat why not somewhere else you know like the middle of your back it, it makes sense ears, now because I mean? it's controlling the energy basically from so the, the way the egyptians viewed it it's it's controlling the energy needs of your brain versus your heart and your heart pumps blood out to the rest of your body so i look at it it's controlling the energy between your brain and the rest of your body so like ka, your neck up energy and the rest of your body neck right. down and our throat it's, chakra a, it's a really controls. great choke point yeah and it, it does all these other functions i didn't talk about it can modulate blood pressure through the the connection of the um the parathyroid hormone with the kidneys to to absorb more it can change blood pressure it can increase blood pressure to try to get more iodine energy and more calcium related energy up to your brain Really? So, yeah. And, and also it's a choke point that your, your thyroid can, um, it, it's also detecting any kind of pathogens. It's trying to keep anything uh, toxic in your blood. It will exactly. filter and screen it and kill it. It's next to your thymus. It has immune functions to protect your cerebrospinal fluid. So it's exactly. actually, um, it makes complete sense to me why it's there because it needs that choke point between this, this system, your blood versus your cerebrospinal fluid. And, um, Wow. It uses gravity. I mean, it does, it, it's really, it does a lot of things 
Um, wow. <laughs> so in, in one of my older thyroid articles, I figured out that the thyroid was the butterfly shaped winged dog ears of Anubis. <laughs> Might be. I don't, and, you know, and, this is like, whoa. <laughs> well, it's a butterfly shaped and, and the, the French dog, the papillon is the dog with the butterfly shaped ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Seen yeah. But the Egyptians viewed a, their, their, uh, their god Anubis, which in Greek times was Hermes. Uh, his symbol was the butterfly there uh, with psyche and stuff. Yes. So it was the key yeah. of the soul. But I figured out, uh, so once you understand what those wings are, they're also the Egyptian Waz scepter. It was a symbol for power, and it was actually talking about the thyroid. It is the power center of your entire power body right. because it's regulating all the energy in your entire body. Wow. So the thyroid's amazing. I've been meditating on thyroid a long time. As you know, I have multiple articles on the thyroid. This is not my first article on calcium. I have a really great article on calcium with the kidneys. Yeah. And yes. there was a, a big wow moment for that one. There's another hormone called calcitriol, which is a secondary activator of vitamin D. Because we talked about vitamin D is also related to help your body absorb calcium. It is, in, is involved in this calcium thyroid pathway as well. Part of what the th parathyroid hormone does is it brings calcium, uh, vitamin D. But it turns out vitamin D has not one, but two activations. One is sunlight, but the other one, it requires a kidney hormone called calcitriol that does the secondary activation of the vitamin D. And so also, I didn't talk about it in this newsletter in a previous one, but fluoride also blocks that. Fluoride and heavy metals block the kidneys, so the kidneys can't make that hormone, so vitamin D can't activate, so that also screws up your calcium. So that's where I was coming at calcium being disrupted from uh, fluoride before. And also that the calcium fluoride can form little um, stones that can make kidney stones. So fluoride really screws up your body on many, many levels. Yeah. But this, I want people to focus on how, really understand how fluoride screws up the energy pathways of your thyroid, which will end up causing osteoporosis as your bones can't dissolve because of the fluoride stuff there. <sighs> Do you kinda, have any questions? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of... <laughs> um... My I'm not mind, trying to blow you away. I'm really trying to make this as simple as possible. And it I was, just... it, it, it was in the way of, because you've been here for a while, Ben. And so people have caught up with, with your system and they know. Um, and for those who might be new here to stars of the morning light, um, you can contact Ben. His email is in the description. You can come see him at, New Earth Energy Market in Ringgold, Georgia on April 27th and 28th. And they know that your system is most is based on what iodine can do to flush out the heavy metals. And of course, that's what I, we mainly focus on, especially the fluoride. But to know what is happening with our bones and to know it's because we don't have enough energy. That I think is new for people. And to know that our thyroid is working with either iodine or calcium to get that energy going, I think this is all new. And so it's just another level of why your system's important, Ben. So it, it really is new. And I, and I really want to, um, I say in the article, but I want to say this again. There, there was a study that just came out that thyroid hormone Synthetic thyroid hormone is the second most prescribed drug in America that 98 million Americans are being prescribed synthetic thyroid hormone. And there oh. are only 330 million Americans. Okay. So you hear me? Yeah, Almost okay. one third of American people, one third of American people have their thyroid screwed up. Oh my God. Okay? Oh my God. One third. That's oh like- God. And probably the other two thirds probably have their thyroid screwed up to a lesser extent. Don't even know it yet, but they will exactly. find out soon. Okay. And is that the heavy metals you think, especially the fluoride, because it's, it's not even allowing it to work the way it's supposed to. It's, it's a combination of heavy metals and fluoride, but I'm telling you it's, it's the worst is the fluoride. Okay. And uh, I didn't put this in the article, but I, I do want to explain this. So back in the day it was, it was known that iodide form in the salt was a cure to goiter. Right. And they, and they just put a little iodide salt, water-soluble form of iodine in the salt. People's thyroids were getting too big from goiter. Problem went away. Okay. But nowadays, this is important, just doing iodide doesn't work anymore. And that little bit, and but they still try to let, 
act like that little bit of iodine people are getting in their salt is enough. But it's clearly not because people's thyroids are still getting bigger. Everybody, like one third of people have got thyroid problems. What changed? What changed was that they started putting fluoride in all this stuff. And also bromine too, other halogens, like the brominated bread. So there's fluoride in processed foods, fluoride in the water. And so that's what changed. And so also in my article, I explain why iodide doesn't work anymore. And you have to have energized nascent iodine to work. Yes. Okay. And right. I think we still have enough time. I want to I want to mention that topic real quick. And then Go I ahead. also, because I was requested to by one of my um, lovely customers, one, one lovely person who asked me to, uh, I talked about cancer in there. I talked about bone cancer. Okay. And yeah. energy. So I still have two more topics, but do you have any questions? No, no, no. Keep going, Ben. Okay. So, <laughs> so it used to be that iodide was enough. So, so we're done with the calcium pathway. Going back to the iodine side of the pathway. There's actually kind of two ways the iodine pathway works. Oh, okay. okay. One is the way that that is known in mainstream medicine is it has a way of using iodide. Okay. Right. Yes. But the way that they use that theory, I think they're using it wrongly because it's clearly not working because everybody in America has got thyroid problems. So what they think about the way that works they're not using it right. So in mainstream medicine, and I have, an art, I have a thing in there where your, your thyroid can take in iodide and it can attach it to thyroid hormone. But the problem is in order to do that, when the iodide comes in, it also has to suck in sodium. It has to bring in salt into the thyroid uh -huh. and it can increase the, the pressure. And that's why thyroid blows up with like goiter when it gets right. too salty. And then it has to so the, the big breakthrough is that iodide is the unenergized form of iodine. Your body needs energized nascent iodine, okay? And it has to work harder to use the iodide. Yes. Okay? Yes. And when you've got heavy metals and fluoride going on there, your body doesn't have the energy to spare, and it can't take the oxidative damage necessary to re-energize the iodine. So your thyroid can normally recycle unenergized iodine into higher energy iodine Put it out into the thyroid hormones which are energy molecules right okay. this by the way I, I explain my theory in there is is other people aren't talking about this that thyroid hormones themselves that are containing iodine the iodine in them actually is an energy molecule okay that's okay. kind of novel for me that's a dr bingo thing you're not gonna yeah say. yeah because okay. i was going to ask you what was in the synthetic but if if you want to well they, they put iodine in there too they usually get yeah. it from like pig hormones and stuff so the, the pig thyroid to energize the iodine already, but okay. the way, <laughs> okay. so, but if you, if you look at the pathway, basically it, your thyroid has to get the iodine inside the thyroid. It has to energize it and then attach it to the thyroid hormones, which it sends out. So the big missing picture that people to understand what it's doing is they have to understand it's doing something with energy. And the missing picture is that the thyroid hormones themselves are energy molecules because they can, they can train the high energy iodine, which is the, um, called organified iodine. It's the iodine attached to a carbon. But in order to get that iodine attached to the carbon, it has to already be in nascent iodine form to do Oh, that. okay. Okay. Got it now. But, yeah. but uh, iodide differs from nascent iodine by an electron. It has to strip an electron off. But what it's really doing, it has to give it a bunch of energy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and the way it does that, there's an enzyme. This is a little complicated, but people can read it. Uh, there's an enzyme in the body called thyroid peroxidase which is the one that will take the iodide and turn it into nascent iodine. Exactly. But in order to, body work. But in order to use thyroid peroxidase, it creates H2O2 hydrogen peroxide, which is oxidative damage. Then your body has another selenium containing protein, um, glutathione peroxidase. It has to deal with that hydrogen peroxide because if it doesn't deal with that. So I'll try to explain this. So in order for your body to use unenergized iodine, it actually has to create oxidative damage, which it has to deal with. And if it doesn't deal with it, it causes damage. Right. To create the energy to make it ionized, okay. right? Okay. To make it. Okay. So, so oh. that, so that path, so that pathway of using the pathway of recycling the unenergized iodine, your body will do it if it's getting the signal that it's low energy, mm. but it's not its preferred way to do it. It would rather just have high energy iodine to start with. Then yes. it can take the high energy iodine to start with, 
not the water soluble stuff. And then it can go right in there and it'll, it'll attach it to the thyroid hormone, send it out in energized form without creating the oxidative damage. Okay. Yes. So, pe See, so people who've already got mercury, they can't take any more oxidative damage in their thyroid to use to recycle the unenergized iodide. So that is, I, it's a little complicated, but that is why iodide doesn't work for people anymore because they yeah, have to have and... the energized form of iodine. But eventually once you detox and you get your energy stabilized, your body can do that. It can use iodide again. It's, it's so fascinating how much goes on within our bodies that we are com completely unaware of. That in order for it to get what it needs, it has to actually harm ourselves. It has to do all this stuff. And eventually everything will sort itself out. But in the meantime, we're tired. We're exhausted. We're, which then makes us more lackadaisical and maybe eat more. Which then just, like everything's, per, everything keeps the cycle going. There's got to be, you know, I always talk about propulsion. Because if all is energy... And our body's trying to do all this stuff without us knowing to get us energy we need. When we then, because of lack of, we're feeling lack of energy, we participate in maybe more harmful stuff to us. It's it's this movement of energy that something has to come in and just stop it. And stop all of the, what seems to be like kind of chaos from the fluoride. Yeah. And, and the only, the only thing that can really just completely stop it from every angle is fluoride. Yeah. And that's, and that's why they focus on fluoride for shutting people down. And that's why I'm at war with fluoride. Oh, and, but it's also then like your detox can come in and stop the damage of the fluoride and stop yeah. and get the body working in harmony and in its actual motion of energy then then we have more energy, we're more productive, we make better choices, we all sorts of stuff to stop, you know, I was relating it more to like with propulsion, if something doesn't stop that energy, it's not going to stop. And I think your detox of with the iodine, gold and silver, it's like that remedy that just stops all the sad things that we have been done to our bodies stops it and then gets it moving in the way it's supposed to yeah it, it does and and uh, so on the calcium side getting those heavy metals out that are disrupting the calcium also getting the fluoride out that's stuck making the calcium stuck that fixes half the energy problem on the calcium side and then on the iodine side just like iodine interferes with um sorry just like fluoride interferes with iodine Iodine can detox fluoride that compete with each other. So if you take more iodine, it'll flush the fluoride out. If you took more fluoride, it would screw up your iodine. So the solution is just taking more iodine. But the big thing that I have to explain to people is you need the energized iodine. So you need the yes. energized nascent iodine that's already pre-energized. Right. So your body can really easily use that iodine energy pathway. Right. Without because, having to use more energy to process it, to make it energized. Right. Because if right. you had, if you had the, it stops it loses the ability to use just the iodide form because it can't um, expend that extra energy and create that extra, extra oxidative damage and it can't deal with that oxidative damage. Um, right. And so it just, I think it sig signals that it'll just shut that pathway down. It's like, no, look, I've already got too much oxidative damage in my thyroid. We're already over damage. We can't recycle the iodine pathway anymore. So then what happens is it'll try to use energized iodine if you have any, but people don't. So then it'll switch to the calcium pathway but then that screwed up from fluoride too. So, so that is what's going on with people. These people that I meet, they have these problems and I'm trying to explain to them why iodine is their solution to their calcium problems. Right. And it's all because of energy and the thyroid. And once it, you understand how this system works and you read my newsletter, you will understand it. You will also understand why iodine fixes all the thyroid problems as well. Ben, those numbers were staggering to me. The it's ridiculous. Of, I, I, I'm going to have, to, I actually will probably be sitting with just the fact that it's that many people taking synthetic horm, uh, thyroid hormones. So they I, have I, like, completely failed people on the way that the, the thyroid works. So the way that they're treating all thyroid problems is they will kill your thyroid, cut it out, and then give you thyroid hormones, it, which contain just, iodine. So they, they are giving you iodine, but they're giving right. you... <laughs> 
<laughs> right. But you got to work for it. <laughs> but but my way is you just give your body the energized iodine up front and it will right. fix itself. Oh, you don't have to goodness. kill and cut out your thyroid. It's so, just so wild to. So that I... is a difference in approach of mainstream medicine. Me Now they love it because it's the second most prescribed drug. They're making billions and billions of dollars off of it. And so they're poisoning people's thyroid for profit. And they're breaking the Hippocratic Oath and people are pissed off and they're going to rebel when people understand what's really happening. But yeah. anyone who is pushing fluoride, and I've seen a lot of dentists who used to push it. I think they're starting to back off now because they're they just... are. Actually, I think a lot of <laughs> dentists are because they, well, because dentists are even getting hit. I mean, that they have their teeth too. You know what I mean? So I think they were think pushing people... fluoride and heavy metals and, yeah. um, and I've. I've met some good ones. They're backing off of it. Right. Uh, but also so recently uh, with the whole COVID thing, you, that remdesivir drug that was killing everyone has five molecules of fluoride in it. So, I have no idea what you're talking about, Ben, but sure. Uh, so during uh, during COVID, people were uh, going to the hospital and they would give them a drug called remdesivir and it would uh, kill them. It would make their organs shut down. Uh, and they were getting paid to kill people during COVID. And it turns out that that remdesivir drug has five molecules of fluoride in it. So they were fluoride poisoning on purpose during COVID. I wonder okay. how fluoride got so, probably because of learning what it can do in the body. Uh, and P, I don't, it's like, I. it's weird that it's like, oh, that's our, that's the ticket. Fluoride. I, I, I have you know, that info. Like, I'm going to talk about that in another newsletter, but I will briefly tell you, but I want to save a little bit of time to talk about cancer at the end too yes go ahead and why but i'll you give you this is bad. kind of a little preview for um one of my future newsletters and it really comes about this question people ask me like what was the origin of this fluoride poisoning yes that's it right okay. it's fascinating <laughs> and as far as i can tell it it was around roman times oh i'm sure okay. <laughs> you know how i so, feel about that <laughs> and and i can explain yeah so it turns out there there's a rock calcium fluoride. It's called fluorite. It's a very beautiful crystal. I love it. I have it in my rock collection. Fluoride binds to calcium insolubly and makes this crystal that's pretty on the outside of your body, but it's really bad inside your body. It calcifies your pineals and does all kinds of right. stuff. So calcium fluoride was in the mines that the Romans, people, the slaves in Roman times were working to make iron. So this isn't, the fluoride was discovered, I think, in the Iron Age. Okay that the slaves in the mines were getting exposed to something that was making them more docile and easy to control. Okay. okay. It was discovered so, around the time of the Iron Age during iron smelting, which came about later. So it may not have just right. been the Romans, but it was cultures that that had mines that were doing iron smelting. And so, in those mines, they had calcium fluoride, and they noticed that their slaves working in those mines were easier easier to control than their other slaves. Right. So by happenstance, they yeah. figured something out. And okay. so then Horrible I think, happenstance, but yes. So then eventually I think uh I'm still trying to piece all this together, but that's that's where I think the origin of it comes from. That's where I think it was discovered. And um <laughs> and obviously, it's everywhere. It's and just obviously, everywhere. Like in places that it you would never think that fluoride would be. And it's like, oh, there it is. It's yes. just there. There were people from Roman times who used it for slavery. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some of those people are still around using it today is what it comes down mm -hmm. to. And just like in Roman times, there were people who resisted. There were slave yeah. uprisings. Right. right. And they, yeah. they were depicted uh, very negatively in like the Lord of the Rings. The orcs weren't necessarily right. the bad guys. They were depicted as a slave uprising. Right. Yeah, they all look janky. I'm an orc because I'm a slave right. who worked in a mine and I've got all these heavy metal poisonings, but I'm rebelling because I know that my master is poisoning me on purpose. Right. <laughs> you know, and so, so uh, Ben, why don't we move on to, because I know you're, we have, we have just about 10 minutes or so. You said I'll you're- cover it really fast. Uh, another part of it, I talked about bone cancer. Okay. Oh. And and how it's related to energy. And so um basically uh ATP is not the only energy molecule in the body. Okay. I also have I'm telling you that iodine is an energy molecule, but there are other energy molecules in the body also. Your body uses electron energy on the electron transport chain where oxygen is the final electron acceptor. 
Your body also uses, uh, there's one called, uh, so hydrogen, uh, proton energy, H plus, and it has hydrogen gradient of energy. Mm -hmm. And then it has another way to carry the hydrogen energy. There's this molecule called NADH. Okay. Don't know if you ever heard of it or not, but if you um, if you study um, cellular respiration and how the mitochondria works, you will run across this molecule. It's one that um, also energy is stored in carbon bonds, like in sugars. And right. so your body has ways to put energy in carbons. It can break those carbons down and get the NADH where it's putting it into proton energy where the, the energy is stored in that. And so the thing about cancer is it seems to like the NADH energy. Oh, NADH. Uh, is used to prime the um, mitochondrial respiration to amplify, to make more ATP from hydrogen energy. Uh, but the idea is in um, in low energy environments, low energy environments, you get more cancer. Right. Because, um, so these mitochondria are, are using um, oxygen and also iodine behaves chemically similar to, to oxygen, but has a lot more electrons can also store energy, can also absorb electrons. So iodine, it looks like it's kind of, is, is known to be anti-cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, but it, right. Uh, but so what was I going to explain that? But basically the, the deal is, is that when you're low energy, um, low iodine or low oxygen, it, it makes these cells have to rely on a different way for energy. So they're not using the uh, they're not using the mitochondrial way with the um, the electron transport chain. So they're not using electron energy. They're not using the oxygen or iodine energy. Instead, they're trying to rely on an older energy pathway with the NADH. With the NADH, if I mm -hmm. said that correctly, yeah. um, that's so that's an energy pathway. You said that cancer prefers that. Yeah, so it's like cancer prefers to be anaerobic versus aerobic. Okay, right. Yeah, it's like, it's think of it like, yes. <laughs> and so that's why both oxygen and iodine kill cancer. Right, because the, so the likelihood if you are, ha if you have more energy being You're transported. Less likely to have the, cancer. Right, being transported correctly through the body, less likely to have cancer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, and so it, that's why I, I just, cause I was talking about osteoporosis and bone problems and that's caused by low energy. And I was also going to be pointing out when you're low energy, you're at a higher risk of cancer. Right. Like energy and motion stays in motion. So it can't, the cancer can't catch you. <laughs> and, and, and are basically <laughs> just think of it, your body needs energy to kill cancer yes. or your body doesn't prefer to, your body does not prefer to make energy the way without oxygen, the anaerobic way. It doesn't do that. Your body uses oxygen. Uh, so there's both your respiration energy. There's also ce cellular respiration, which is what I'm talking about with the mitochondria. It uses oxygen as the final electron acceptor on the electron transport chain. It is my belief that iodine can also serve that function and that the electron transport chain can be used to energize iodine and another pathway to you know, iodine energy. Ben, this is actually making sense to me as to what at some points a nurse told me something after my hysterectomy because I my I was able to grow a very large tumor it was benign but it's what I was able to do my body is very special that way um one of my neighbors is she's a teaching nurse so she's a retired nurse who now teaches and I was talking to her about the hysterectomy and she said oh well that tumor probably got that big because you know tumors just suck they feed off of all your minerals all off of all your vitamins it's like they just feed off of that because i was telling her i was exhausted for years it felt like it makes sense to me now that she would say minerals and vitamins and the things that we apparently get energy from mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, she was trying to say to me what you're now saying to me. Yeah, you, you have cancer because you're low energy. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> right. You understand that. Uh, right. And so, but that's, that's a big cool point that uh, iodine, all three of my things, iodine, silver, and gold are anti-cancer. But yes. the, if you think about my latest newsletter and just think about it, you can, it'll kind of make sense to you why I, one of the reasons why iodine is anti-cancer. Yeah.
which is brilliant and wonderful from bone cancer to all sorts of cancers. I do want to throw out there, Ben, before we let you go, have you ever looked into sickle cell? Yeah, sickle cell anemia. Yeah, um, I'm I'm I would be curious and maybe we can have that as a side conversation between you and I. Um I'm I'm you're probably you don't know much right now because I just threw it at you, but as we were talking today, you mentioning the kidney led me to think something else, which then led me to sickle cell. Um look into it. So I think at the top of my head, I think it's when you're um some of your cells, I think it might be the red blood cells they that carry oxygen, they get uh, messed up. And instead of looking like this, they turn into like yes. crescent moon shapes. Yes. Yes. And, uh, I haven't looked at that recently, but definitely the, um, that's in your body's respiration, not cellular respiration. Your, your blood carries the, the hemoglobin red blood cells to carry the oxygen. And it has a little right. iron, iron in there that binds to the oxygen. Um, and so that is a disruption in your energy pathway. Yeah. So yeah, I, that, that definitely would, I would definitely look into that um, for you. Yeah, because I ha I've had people in my life that I care about deeply that have suffered from that. And it and also uh, one fourth of July, you were on my back deck and I was talking to you about how I don't have the best um, liver and kidneys and stuff. Um, so I when you were talking about the kidney, I was thinking about that and it led me to sickle cell. Um, it might be interesting to look into that and see if there's anything that can be helped there through the iodine, gold, and silver. I think it can regardless. And I think there's a lot of people out there. And when you're also mentioning vitamin D, I mean, there's a population of people that um, suffer from different things than everyone else. And it's because of definitely vitamin D deficiency and and stuff about their, their culture um, or blood types like the sickle cell and other things so I was just that's where my mind was going more of the American black population um, well well in this episode um, I did run across something an interesting thing about the liver you might be interested in so in mainstream medicine they will tell you that the t3 hormone is the active form and the t4 hormone is the inactive form of thyroid hormone yeah okay but the way that dr. bingo thinks about it is actually the opposite Hmm. Okay, because to me, the T4 thyroid hormone has four molecules of iodine. It is the super extra energy molecule. Yeah. And T3 it has one less molecule of iodine, it has less energy. But it makes the whole thyroid system make sense when you think about it my way, because your your thyroid predominantly 80% makes the T4. And I'm looking at those T4 molecules now as being energy molecules. Everywhere in the blood, that's like your energy reserve. Mm. And then your body converts it to T3, the active form. That and a, that actually sends a signal to your body. That is how your body tells that your iodine energy pathway is getting lower. So you have the ratio of T4 to T3. Yeah. If, your T, if your T4 levels are going down, they're losing an iodine. You're losing iodine energy. Right. To turn that, to, right. that is the signal to your thyroid saying, hey, my, my iodine pathway is going lower high. So a lot of, uh, I talked about that in my episode, but you so and the, the point with the liver was that your thyroid actually predominantly makes T4, the okay. energized form, what I'm calling the energized form, they would call it the inactive form, but I would call it like, you wouldn't call ATP inactive. I mean, that's like the energy molecules full of energy. I'm thinking of T4 like this super duper full of energy molecule. What the thyroid is doing, it's predominantly putting that out. Okay. Your body, so your body has this energy ready to go. Most of it is actually converted to T3 in the liver. Oh. Okay. And we already know the liver is the site of detox. And we already know iodine is used for detox. So it makes complete sense. Of course, your liver is going to use convert the most T4 to T3 because your liver needs lots of energy. Yes. Using the iodine to detox. It make, it just all makes a lot of sense when you think about the theory in turn, the way that I think of it, which is very different than the way mainstream medicine thinks about it. Yeah. And definitely Ben, you know, what's helped me keep up with our conversation today. It was that video we did many moons ago about the thyroid. When you were talking about the T3 and the T4, I gained so much education that day <laughs> and that's how I can handle, you know, do a conversation right now. So the, I, it's definitely in the description below folks, there's going to be a way to contact Dr. Ben. If you want a, a free consultation about his iodine, gold and silver detox system, 
And also I'm going to add some other videos along with this newsletter um, to, for you to gain all the knowledge you can, because Ben, the more that we speak here, the more that I learn via you, um, the more I'm understanding how much our bodies need to get back to their natural homeostasis state because they were made perfectly. They were yeah. made absolutely perfectly. And so even when we're born with something or we're struggling with something now because of whatever environmental, whatever issue it might've been, we can get back to well closer to that than what we are now. Right. So yeah. I think it's, it's really important that we do these videos. It really is Ben. On that note, I'll make a quick comment. You know, they say a lot of these cancers are genetic and a lot of these things are genetic, right. but, but you don't understand that zinc, which is another mineral we talk about can interact with your DNA. Silver and gold can interact with your DNA. So a lot of times these things that they're saying are incurable genetic problems can still be just heavy metal toxicity problems. And right. when you detox that out of there, your DNA expression will resume. The way that works with the ATP is that it's adenosine triphosphate. Aden the adenosine part of it is a, a nucleotide. That's how the ATP energy system interacts with your DNA system. So we you know, talk about that. I'm, I'm happy that today was about energy too, because now you went into DNA and I wish we actually had longer <laughs> because we are headed into a season of feeling like we're having low energy, but it's because our ancient DNA is activating and the DNA we currently have is shifting and changing. And so maybe that can be our next episode, Ben, because I do know what's happening, at least energetically, maybe not inside my body so much. That's where you we're come so in play. sync, Courtney. I want you to know that I, I heard you say that, but even before I heard you say that, I am getting all this like knowledge from my ancient lives mm -hmm. where these like my slave ancestors from Orkney Scotland area were fighting the Romans them damn Romans are fluoride poisoning us and <laughs> and I'm telling you I'm getting all these these tools I'm telling you yes. iodine iodine the eye of Odin it opens your eye of Odin it opens your pineal yes I'm, I'm getting this knowledge from a really weird pagan Norse perspective of my ancient ancestral DNA remembering this is how you fight the Romans you know attacking what, ben, you with fluoride maybe you and I were together in a past life at some time maybe we'll have to explore that as like vikings or some kind of nordic something um maybe you were maybe you killed me with a dwarf sword i don't know i hope not <laughs> but uh i i do know that uh, I'm, I'm not like anti-roman i mean i, I i'm not anti-roman catholic or anything like that but no, just no, like back that. in the ancient yes. day it was the Romans doing the fluoride poisoning and yes. I'm anti fluoride poisoners. And there are people in the American empire still using these right. tools that they got from ancient Rome. And yes. I'm at war with those people because yes. they are literally treating everyone like slaves. They're blocking our energy. And just like back then I had to go back in time and ancestral knowledge to find this knowledge on how to fight them yeah. and just even identifying what the problem was. But I'm telling you the problem is fluoride. It is. Yeah. You go into a grocery store and you see water marketed to babies and it's got fluoride in it. That's evil. And that's got to stop. And I don't care what it takes in my yeah. lifetime. That's going to stop. Yeah, it will. Gonna... <laughs> in our lifetime, Ben, because we're 81 babies. We'll see it. <laughs> we're going to see it happen. <laughs> well, Ben, we are we are out of time, my friend. Anything you want to end with, my dear? I mean, that's it. I, I'm, I am a warrior. I'm not advocating for violence, but I am at war with fluoride and I'm, I'm it's an information war. I'm trying to educate people on how yeah. they can use iodine to get rid of the fluoride and heavy metals and to restore their energy. And once you have your energy, you regain your power, you regain your life, you regain just your connection to God. Everything comes back. When you I think you back. are a good balance between a fluoride warrior and a healer. Because I know what you're referring to and you're referring to the Kashik continuously telling you, you don't want to be a warrior. Warriors just create wars. Like, um, but being against fluoride is fine and educating people is fine because you're trying to actually heal them. Right. But you got to use a little bit of oomph to get it done. So that's okay. I am a healer. And, and that's, that's, uh, I had great meditation on that. You have to, 
use the techniques that work to fight these people. But then at the end of the war, you have to put down the sword. You yes. know what I mean? And not yes. because it's so easy to then the people who come into power then pick up those same techniques to enslave. And exactly. that's usually what happens. And that's, and so, yes. Oh, right on, man. Right on. And that's what's happened here. I mean, this this is just With stuff everything. handed down that people are using for evil. And But the tools to fight them, it is sort of warrior knowledge, but I'm not trying yeah. to be a warrior, but I have to be to win this war. But once this war is over, I'm just a healer. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to heal people. Yes. And people, all these health problems people have, they're so related to energy and just their thyroid not working. And the right. two things that are blocking it are heavy metals and halogens. And my system will detox that. And that's why it's so powerful. And I really want to thank you so much for all that you've done to help me get that message out there. Yeah. Because it's just helping so many people. Yes. Awesome. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. I swear. Well, no, your wife is <laughs> so I'm your second biggest fan. Beautiful stars. Thank you for being with us today. Um, keep shining contact Ben or contact me. I am a distributor for Ben. Um, our emails are below. Like I said, the other videos are below and his March newsletter if you are in the Tennessee, Alabama, North Georgia area on April 27th, 28th, you can actually come meet Ben in person at the Patriots Hall, 320 Emerson Drive, Ringgold, Georgia. He's going to be at the event both days. It's a great holistic fair. I'll put it out here in the community page. So Ben, I will see you soon, my friend. Thank you so much, Courtney. You have a wonderful day. You too. Bye, everyone.